today we'll finish this robot yes that's what you heard at the end of today's video it's going to be like a brand new car coming out of the factory ready to go why do i make these promises right i always end up getting the short end of the stick There were times when it looked like he was gonna fall forward. He took some awkward steps, and we tried to fix that by adding a gear, which is this one here. This gear makes the system on this side stick together with the system on that side. Both must move in unison without losing sync. It's time to test the small one. It turned out really, it turned out really beautiful. Really good. It's running very smoothly since it's synchronized. If one motor gets weaker, the other helps, making the movement more even. I wonder if it'll be the same with me on top. Let's go. Oh, wow. This is something else. Wow, this is the maximum speed. I'm going to slow it down. This here is the low speed. I think it's really cool. Who said this engine was weak, huh? No, but Ibera, you bought a really weak engine. You were fooled by the AliExpress specs. Ah, uh, hold the phone. Should I get the tip of his foot wet? I pushed the little guy here doing a curve test and the gear tooth broke. Octobot lost its first tooth. If I put it under the pillow, will the tooth fairy bring me something? Since it's the end, we had to work on a bunch of other things to get the robot all ready. The first thing was to reinforce all the welds, sand everything again, and paint the chassis black one more time. We also took apart all the aluminum parts, cleaned off the grease that had been dirty since the beginning of Octobot when we were handling those pieces, and now it's clean, painted, looking great, but it was still without wheels. So we took a motorcycle tire, cut it into several pieces, and screwed them underneath at the tip of each foot so that when it walks, it doesn't slip on the floor. It grips much better, just like the sole of a shoe or the grooves of a tire. In short, we're in the final stretch in Octobot, you already know, right? Petrobras and the federal government have been with us in this from the planning stage up until now through the final adjustments, going through all the tough times along with us. While we're trying to build a vehicle to run on the ground, do you know what Petrobras is testing? An unmanned aircraft. And no, it's not just a little drone. It's a mini helicopter without passengers. A pilot remotely operates this aircraft, which has flown from a base in Mackay, Rio de Janeiro, to an offshore platform in the Campos Basin. If you think that's not much, it's 180 kilometers away. We've already made this trip by helicopter, and it's really far. This type of flight is called Beyond Visual Range, and the idea is that in the future this machine will be able to carry about 50 kilos of cargo between the mainland and the platform. What do you think is the maximum distance we can control our Octobot from, huh? Well, theoretically, we could already take this thing outside and make it start walking. The thing is, the electrical part has always been kind of a temporary setup that we put together. Wires ran everywhere in a messy setup just to see it function. But the goal was always that, in the end, Octobot's electrical system would work more or less like a car's. Look, look at this. Our regular car battery is 12 volts, but not here. Our battery is 48 volts. We use a higher voltage so we can power the four motors that will make Octobot move. Like an electric car battery, it has a much higher voltage than 12 volts. So the first different thing we want to install is a switch, so people don't go there and accidentally turn Octobot on. Suddenly a child comes over and messes with it, causing it to start moving. It's important to have an emergency button. This one, if I'm on top of it and anything goes wrong, I press it and Octobot will stop immediately. But I thought this still wasn't enough. If there's a bigger problem and someone needs to turn it off from the outside, if someone needs to help me, I want there to be a second button behind Octobot. So in the end, we have three different switches, three different buttons here that can turn off Octobot. Up to this point, that's fine, but we wanted to install some accessories, a few extra things, and everything we want to install isn't 48 volts, it's 12 volts, so we found a converter from 48 to 12. We thought it would be good to have a button to turn off all 12 volt accessories at once. The most crucial component is the Arduino. It's the one that will control the motors, and it works with 5 to 12 volts, so we can connect it directly here. 
Alongside the Arduino, there's the radio reception component. I won't include the smaller boards here as they're part of the control system, the machine's brain. And now come the automotive accessories. After all, our robot is practically a car. So it has to have headlights so it can move at night. A horn to warn people who might walk in front of the Octobot. An LED, which is our internal night lighting, so to speak. A USB port to connect some accessory since that's how modern cars work. And a reverse siren to warn people to get out of the way when it's moving backward. You saw that the whole setup isn't super simple, right? So what did we do? We put everything inside a box that goes under the seat, which in this case isn't ready yet. Let's go finish it. Think of a tangled mess. The first thing I'm going to try to do here is find a way to secure the battery. The idea is to create a drawer-like compartment for the battery with a latch in front to prevent it from slipping out as it's still loose. The second step is to close this box. The problem is that I can't close it in a way that makes it permanent because if we need to work on the electronics, I need to be able to remove these parts that I'm gonna put in now. So first, I'm gonna make a cover that goes under the seat. This one will be harder to remove, requiring the seat to be taken out first. However, in the front, there will be a smaller cover. I'm going to attach it with a magnet. That was the idea we had to make it easy to remove, and at the same time, keep it firmly in place. In the front, we're going to do the same thing. A second cover featuring 10 magnets, five on each side. It's adorable. We need to create a control panel for the Octobot with basic buttons like power on, power off, and emergency. It must be accessible without being visually obtrusive or interfering with movement. I'm considering placing it on my left hand. Besides a small liquid crystal display display, there will be four buttons. The main power switch, a 12V system switch, an emergency button, and the horn. We're using a nautical mesh to protect and organize the cables. It resembles a fancy computer power supply. Here on the arm, which already has a little cushion, there's now a motorcycle switch that turns on both headlights. Under the structure, we installed an addressable LED strip to add charm at night. For now, the only thing we can test here is the horn. Turn on 12 volts, it works. And the USB output here also lit up, let's test it. If everything goes wrong, at least our robot honks and charges a cell phone. There was a cool challenge that we had to solve, which is how to connect the parts of Octobot. The central part and two sides with legs need to be detachable for portability, as it's wider than a car. A fixed wire connecting the parts would be problematic due to potential snapping, length, and winding issues. Check this out. We connected all the components in the legs, headlight, motor, and LED into this cable. It ends with a connector resembling old printer connectors, which we plug into Octobot underneath. Here we go, main switch, 12 volts. Is this when it's supposed to move? Yeah, it was supposed to go forward. Everything seems to be connected. The horn works, but for now it doesn't really feel like moving. Is the controller set up right here? Isn't there still that thing where you have to turn on the Arduino inside? The Arduino is on, yes. Isn't it one of those emergency buttons that's not letting it work? It was easier when it was all improvised, right? The thunderstorm means we must reschedule the test. Well, if it didn't work, let's make lemonade out of this lemon, right? Since we have to find the problem, let's put this whole electrical part together again and do it a bit better. The main change we're going to make is to put all the negative cables in black, all the 12 volt ones in yellow, and the 48 volt ones in red. We also printed some 3D parts to make things fit better and to replace these branches, which is when several wires have to come out of just them that were made with these splices with a bus bar, which is a board where the power comes in here and goes out through these cables that are fastened with screws. It looks much nicer. We also installed a ventilation system with an inward facing fan and an outward facing fan, allowing air to enter and exit through separate locations. And the most important thing is that we think we found the fault that was in the connection of this cable here on the inside. A cable that should have been connected here on the left side was connected on the right side. For the 59th time, let's test it. Weeks of work here, huh? Whoa! Ha 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 ha! It's at maximum. Beautiful, huh? Whoa! Ah, he's walking! Look, he's making a little turn. Look, he's doing it. We lost some teeth. 
The black gears, they were made with impact polylactic acid. It's a much more resistant filament. And this green one is a filament that's more brittle. So far, all the ones that broke are green. Pit stop to change the gear here. We've already made it simple. It takes about 10 minutes to change. Let's see. It's really cute to see this little guy walking. Promise from the beginning of the video fulfilled. We have a brand new vehicle coming out of the factory. Everything working. But let's agree that this test space is kind of lame. It's only five meters long before we have to turn back. So here's the deal. In the next video, we're gonna make a big test circuit for Octobot to see the distance it goes, the speed it moves, and please leave in the comments what things you want us to put in this circuit. What tests, what limits do you want us to test with this thing? Sponsored by Petrobras.